On this week's GTA 6 O'Clock, the ultimate trailer breakdown, hidden details, analysis and more. It's all here on this week's GTA 6 O'Clock. Hello and welcome to this very special episode of GTA 6 O'Clock. My name is James and I am joined by Dan. Hello, Dan. Hello. You felt like you were in a daze there for a second, which is understandable given what we're about to talk about. Yeah, I, I I didn't think we would be talking this way at this time. The trailer leak has caught us all sideways. James and I are both uh, thrilled, also kind of emotional and quite tired. Uh, both of us uh, operate on UK hours and the trailer leaked quite late last night. I was literally getting ready for bed. Uh, I was still communicating with James three hours later. Uh, I've come into work this morning to see James and, you know, he... He does look a touch tired, so we're both we're both a little bit frazzled. So we've spent the last few hours, you know, we weren't asleep, researching clues, pouring through websites, rewatching the trailer, rewatching the stills. We've been so deep into this, but I still don't think we're even going to scratch the surface. But you know, hey, let's let let's you know set out the stall, James. Let's get into it. Yeah, and I'll, yeah, just to say, it's good job that this is a audio podcast and we're not on camera because I'm looking fresh. Um, so yeah, we saw everything that happened last night. It appeared that the trailer leaked on probably other platforms, but predominantly on Twitter just before 11 o'clock UK time. And then within minutes, within 10, maybe 15 minutes, Rockstar put out their official tweet saying our trailers leaked. You might as well watch the proper version here. The leaked version had like a, a crypto stamp all over it and was like a terrible version of the trailer. Um, you know, it was really bad. And obviously, Rockstar don't want that version of the trailer being the one that everyone pulls apart for 24 hours. So like, it was the only thing they could do was to release it. But it felt like that that, that was a backup plan, you know, just in case mm. we need a plan of attack here if, if something does happen and the good news is that you know we've got a high quality version of the trailer now to talk about and to to go over but yeah like the leak sucked it would have been amazing to have this opportunity to watch this all together at the same time and really have one of those moments in a world where you know no one wants to wait for anything and everything's instant, always on, all the time. Give it to me now. This felt like a nice moment that is now, unfortunately, not happening. It's, re it's really sad. And I don't think a GTA trailer reveal should feel this way. To be clear, the trailer's amazing. I think the trailer's really, really good. But I'm very melancholy and bittersweet about the entire experience. I was saying to James pre-recording, the hardest thing as well, this isn't the only leak hundreds of videos leaked late in the summer. So this trailer became almost an exercise in vindicating what we already knew to be true, which is not what GTA trailers are about. G GTA trailers, Rockstar themselves, have always been the absolute masters, almost to the point of impossibility, of obscuring what they were going to reveal. Mm. All of the other games were just these incredible blank canvas guessing games of what location it might be. Well, this was all laid out bare. And, and I think what's what's really sad is, you know, GTA is a cultural milestone that represents mystery, uh, people communing around the unknown, old Hollywood glamour, and the fact they were able to do all their talking just through the games and the footage themselves. And the games have always satired culture and fast-moving culture. Unfortunately, this time, culture has eaten GTA. Like you talked about, our fast-moving culture, the relentless nature of it, the social media, the constant broadcasting need to be first, has ruined a beautiful thing. Now, that's got to the point where the entire release of GTA's first trailer has almost become a piece of performance art because the criticism is no longer f from the game outwards, it's everything around the meta of the game has become its own criticism of basically, you know, Things have gone a bit, a bit rubbish. Yeah, it's ru it's ruined the sense of occasion and glamour for me. Maybe I'm ste a step out of time here, but I think this would have meant so much more if we all could have congregated at the set time and enjoyed a singular moment of communion, which in our fractured world is something we're missing. Mm. Yeah, and it, I think you know, as we were saying, 
just before we jumped on it, it's absolutely a sign of the times, you know, like Rockstar have, have never had anything leak. Like they've been one of the tightest ships in the mm. industry and have released, you know, some of the biggest games in the world. So they've kept that really well under wraps until now when we're in a different time and different place. And there's so many more opportunities for these things to come out. Like if I was putting my speculative hat on, I'd say this was probably somebody in YouTube's back end that had seen it, you know, because Rockstar set this up as a premiere, so it was mm, uploaded mm, somewhere. Yeah. Someone was like, I know how to get to that. Maybe I'll give it to my mate and they'll give it to their mate and then it'll get posted. But it, it's just the kind of thing that never would have happened 10 years ago for, you know, GTA 5. Anyway, with all that said and done, the general thoughts of the trailer, which I'm sure you're looking at now as we talk about these things, is that it confirms almost everything that we knew, yeah. right? Um, and I think if we have a look back at our predictions video that lasted almost 24 hours, yeah. but not quite <laughs> by the time we got it out there, um, the trailer is 60 to 90 seconds long. It features amazing vistas. We get a glimpse of the lead character and there's a line of VO in it. So, you know, check all of those things off. I think we were pretty close with what we were going to get and we have got it. Like I say, Lucia gets named. It's a return to Vice City. The song is Love is a Long Road by Tom Petty. Uh, and I think there are some interesting lyrics in that song and how it relates to probably, as we were saying, well, yesterday now, thematically, what it might set up for the story. Yeah, so I mean, just very, very briefly, the Tom Petty song is about the difficulty of maintaining a relationship. And I guess it just, you know, it just describes the struggle for love. Uh, now, very particularly, the song's about a girl who cares about the narrator and tries to make his world better. But it says, for their desperation to be with each other, the narrator realises that love is not easy and requires effort. Now, it doesn't take a great leap of imagination to, to, from watching this trailer to see Lucia and the currently unnamed, but let's face it, we know who it is, other partner. And, and there's a very key moment at the end of the trailer where they say, trust, trust. And clearly their dynamic is utterly central to the thematics of gta 6 we'll talk about that in much more detail as we go through the trailer because i think there's a hint of a very large overarching theme here it's not explicit but i think the parts add up and we'll talk about that as we get into it but yeah this this story is clearly you know a love story about two characters plus 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 and we'll get into that in a minute yeah, like there is loads to go into here. And we should say, as Dan mentioned, this is our first, like, I mean, 12 hours of reacting to the trailer. We're going to say a lot of things. Some of it we might need to go back in future weeks and reconfirm or tweak slightly. Um, so apologies if we say something that's way off. If we do, put a comment below. Uh, and if you see anything or want to us to expand on anything else, that we talk about also let us know as we get into this one more thing before we jump into the 46 different scenes that are in this trailer um the game has been announced officially by rockstar via a press release that it's coming to playstation 5 and xbox series x and s sometime in 2025 currently no mention of a pc release and the financials then, as we previously discussed on our other episodes, Rockstar are planning to have a big boost in their financials by the end of their 2024 year, which would end in March 2025, confusingly. Um, so uh, if this trailer is, you know, if the release date stays of what this trailer says it is, it means that GTA 6 has to come out between January and March currently in 2025. Correct. So in Rockstar's financial statement for the year ahead, there was an extra three billion of revenue booked in, which isn't coming out of the sky. It's clearly coming from a major, major release. So GTA, for both things to be true, GTA has to drop within that fiscal year, which ends, in, ends at the end of March. And 2025, exactly like James says, it's Jan to the very end of March. Now, it's entirely possible that, you know, to still be true to 2025, it could be up until December mm. 2025. But then it would move into another financial year 
And at some stage, Rockstar or Take Two, their parent company, will have to explain that because they're a publicly listed company and this has significant real world implications for share price. So that will be a watch this space if it gets delayed. Or not gets delayed, but gets delayed beyond the fiscal year. Yes. And if you've been following the journey of previous GTA games, the expectation, I, I mean, I would say, I'm going to not expect it to come out in March 2025. I am sorry, listeners. I think it might be more likely that if we get another trailer, it will be more specifically dated to somewhere in the latter half of that year. You know, September, October, November time. Yes. Uh, something else to note from the official press release. They confirm the state, uh, which we, we've been tossing back and forth, whether it's uh, Leonida or Leonida. Uh, maybe the one that sounds more like Florida because it's mm. the state of Florida, state of Leonida. The thing I thought was most significant is, that, well, first of all, it includes a quote from Sam Hauser. So it's saying, look, our president and co-founder is here announcing this. He's really behind it. This is classic rock star. They talk about not just the fact it's the most detailed GTA, which we would we had spoken about, like, would this game go deeper than before? It also confirms it's the biggest GTA. So anyone who was fearful of a return to Vice City narrowing the scale need not worry, because it looks like this is also going to be absolutely huge. So with all that said, just before we jump into the trailer, I want to throw up an image of the first official artwork that we have because it's actually quite significant to what we're going to talk about within the trailer stuff. Um, so, so I think the one thing to note here is that Lucia has actually got an ankle bracelet on, which would be, is this a way of limiting your ability to travel across the whole map at the beginning of the game because you can't either, you know, go outside past a certain time or you can't go into certain boundaries because then it goes off it would be a very clever way of without being without doing the oh the bridges are all broken you can't drive across there of having some kind of containment that it later on in the game gets released yeah it would be a nice device to limit your ability to meander everywhere uh, and by this, we do mean not just uh, like an ornamental ankle bracelet. We mean like an ankle tag, like a like a prisoner release tag that would inform the authorities. And it might be, you know, it might be exactly that. And you can go beyond the confines of the map physically, but you instantly trigger a six star alert mm. or something and you're basically doomed almost instantly. Uh, it's a device that like the Zelda games use where you can go to certain locations. But if you haven't got the right outfit, you freeze to death very quickly. So yeah. it would be similar to that potentially I would also corroborate this idea that we see at the start of the trailer Lucia is a prisoner it looks like she's chatting to who we assume is like a parole officer why is she being released that's the big why here uh, is assuming this is all chronologically correct and the game starts with her being released with prison you know all these things that we can explore as we look at the trailer in depth okay let's get into it so the first scene in the trailer is this one beautiful Miami-esque skyline. We think this is looking, I'm going to get this right, east? Yes. We, we've we spent a, a, a crazy amount of time looking at maps and driving ourselves crazy. We think this is slightly eastward looking towards a sunrise. And you can map this against real life geography. We think this is like Orlando area or the... Uh, gta 6 equivalent and if you were to look at a real map you can actually see a penitentiary facility which is the sort of dome areas in the center and you'd also notice james i mean you know and the stupidly enormous column tower which which is what this is the like florida broadcast tower and and actually because of the way that this all came out when i first looked at this it was like such low resolution that I thought it was just some kind of like little smudge on my screen. I was like, what is that weird line that goes up? But now it's in a good, you know, 1084K resolution. You can see that it's just a massive tower. But yes, that would all, you can see the prison in the background. You can see the tower on the left. That would mean we are looking in that direction. If you actually look at um, like Orange County Correctional Department on a yeah. Google map, you can sort of see this lake area 
and how obviously it's not one to one scale, but how that world might have been condensed down slightly to make all of this stuff match up. I'm sure you can do that in other locations as well, but this is our first stab at this is where we think this might be. Yeah, and it's also interesting if that bit of geography is correct we've put down, that would make the conurbation of skyscrapers in the top left, I think the reverse of the Miami Beach hotels, if we've got that right, if you're eastward, eastward looking, this would be like the backside of those. And you know, cleverer people than us will prove us right or wrong using the actual mapping. So we'll report on that through our Twitter account. But that was our feel. And the main thing is, yeah, this is Orlando area. What I think is also telling is the first thing you see, they don't mess around. They're saying immediately, yes, this is Vice City. You were right. The sunset is the same purple as the teaser image they released. And even the thematically, shows you the level of coordination they've got. The seagulls are in the teaser image and the first thing you see in the trailer. So this was clearly always part of it. Mm -hmm. A fun throwaway thing here I would be is that this is almost an Easter egg nod to the first GTA Vice City trailer where there's literally a flock of seagulls in both. If you were to take the name of the track I ran mm -hmm. and the band who produced it. So I think that might be me transposing, but I still think that's a cute nod if you wanted to look for it. Great. There's obviously loads of stuff in here as well and throughout this trailer in terms of vehicles, you know, motorbikes, signage, all of that kind of stuff. We're going to save that for a later episode because, as we said at the beginning, there is so much to go through here. We're probably going to pick out like one or two things from mm. each scene and some of them, you know, probably be able to stitch together as a whole, like oh, a couple of scenes here. So we'll talk about that briefly. Um, so... Otherwise, this episode's going to be super, super long. I mean, it's probably going to be long anyway. But It would just be us naming cars for two hours, and nobody wants that. So the next shot we see is this one of uh, what we assume is the prison car park. There's not a lot to say about this other than you can see the birds again in the top. Uh, and then we are into our first glimpse of who we now know is Lucia. Yeah, and I think what's interesting, I feel like these three scenes back to back are all meant to be the same, happening at the same time. They're meant to make you think that it's the same location, for yeah, sure. Yeah, so th think it's the same location and think it's the same time of day with the, you know, the diffuse sunlight, looks like sunrise, the the seagulls appearing in the, certainly the first two frames. It's supposed to create that sense of it all being part of the same thing. Now, obviously, this is about to be our first glimpse of Lucia, who's the, uh, you know, we assume the lead character and in fact that does seem to be the way from all of Rockstar's official communications mm -hmm. um, Lucia we are assuming and I think it feels a fairly safe assumption to say she's a, like a Latino based character now the name Lucia again is very popular in Latin countries it's worth noting however that its origin is actually Italian and Lucia one of the meanings of Lucia well there's two meanings of Lucia and they're both really interesting thematically one is Lucia means light, which as we'll explore when we talk about the duality with her and the other character and who's who and what they stand for might be really significant. Mm. And also it means lucky in love, which may or may not be true, uh, but would thematically again be completely correct. Great, yeah, so here we think we are looking out on what would be the correctional facility. We don't think we can see any male inmates through the frosted glass like we might be wrong but could this be a women's only prison that is not the one that is in orange county that is both sexes but there are plenty of correctional facilities in my hammy that if it isn't the one we think it is or could this just be the woman's wing of it the interesting thing that i want to point out here is in the bottom right you can see like a what looks like a family photo of five people, one of which looks like they are dressed in an inmate's outfit. And now I've uh, said that out loud, that is actually a male, what looks like a male yeah. figure. Yeah. Um, could this be somebody, could this be Lucia's bunk? Is she, has she got a relationship with somebody who's already in the prison? Could that person in the picture, it's really hard to tell, could it be who we're now calling Jason. We're probably just going to call him Jason for the rest of th this episode. But, like, could yes. it be him? Did they meet in prison? Is that how the relationship started? There's lots of questions that that picture 
may or may not answer. It's just a little bit too hard to make out. And, and as we speak, actually, we're yet to receive an official 4K download from Rockstar, so we haven't been able to do super forensic lighting and zoom in work on, mm. on all of the photos. So we are working with slightly blurry materials. It's clearly somebody wearing orange and it looks like an inmate's outfit. I think it's unlikely that someone's just a flamboyant dresser who rhapsodizes all in orange. That seems weird. So yeah, I think there's some familial connection, assuming it is Lucia's photo, like we said. So we jump forwards now to this next scene, which is obviously still in the prison. Uh, what we think is some kind of parole officer. You can see some photos of her family in the background behind her here. Uh, her name is Stephanie. We're not sure if she's going to be any kind of play any kind of part in the game other than probably doing whatever is happening here. Um, but you never know, she might pop up again later on in the story. But it looks like for now, this is just going to be one of those meetings that sets up whatever is about to happen. Uh, yes, seems unlikely she's significant. I guess the only thing you might say is that the trailer has begun and something going on behind the scenes is that Rockstar is a studio of undergone a cultural revolution. I don't think it's by accident. The first characters we, that we see are both women, Latino and, you know, a uh, person of color. So I think that's Rockstar showing their, you know, more progressive credentials, potentially, or it's just the way the plot is and, you know, forget it, that's fine. Um, there's interesting family photos of hers in the back, but I don't feel like she's a character that's going to come back, which may come back to haunt me because <laughs> maybe she is really significant. The thing that might be interesting is this. it looks like she's discussing potentially the terms of uh, parole or something similar with Lucia. Why would that be? What's motivating it? Why is she allowed to release? This ties into the tag on her ankle. Whether it's just a traditional parole or there's a bigger picture at play here that we don't know about. Yeah, the voice line is very much, do you know why you're here, Lucia? And she's like, oh, I guess it was an accident. Uh, whether that implies that they've got a previous relationship or she's been in prison before, who knows? But we will definitely uh, keep looking into it and find out. The next thing in the trailer is a very iconic shot of what is, uh, in real life, Miami Beach uh, in GTA 6 Vice Beach. Uh, as the camera pans up from the sea here, you can actually see a school. Is it a school of dolphins? A flock of dolphins? A let's pod. Say, They're called pods. A pod let's of dolphins. Say a pod. Let's say a pod. Uh, four dolphins. And there's actually two sharks in this shot as well. Very close to the, A, the beach, and B, the dolphins. Um, but so sharks confirmed for being in the sea. That's cool. Um, and then as we go further up you can see the big expansive beach shot with all of the hotels we think we know what one of these hotels is called correct yes uh, we spent a lot of time this morning like almost an hour going back and forth on which hotel was which uh, the yellow stripe hotel you see centrally uh, this looks like actually a what Rockstar do a lot is they take the essence of a real life location and the broad geographical dispersion and then slightly distort it to suit their ends. So this is geographically a very similar match, but we think that particularly the Yellow Hotel has been slightly embiggened, like it's a bit taller and more high scale because it's slightly more iconic looking due to its design. Um, that hotel is called... The Confederate on Miami Beach, we think. Uh, or at least that is one of these hotels here. Um, yeah, this is where we turned ourselves inside out earlier today. So please correct in the comments and, you know, as the mapping community triangulate, please set us straight. One of the more interesting things in this shot, I mean, there's, there's so many interesting things in this shot, but um, something that someone might have missed is the plane in the top right, which comes into shot, is flying a giant banner, uh, which as the camera gets a little bit closer to it, you can actually see that it says uh, Y69 when you can 919. Uh, and the symbol, uh, originally I thought it might have been like a, a Netflix spin-off, but actually uh, GTA, 4 user, GTA 4 user Kevin R. 1990 um, says he's lived in South Florida for some several years and it could be a parody of the, I guess it's 1111, nightclub in Miami um, and he's seen that logo 
And if I we pull up the logo for you now, this one. Oh, it's it's pretty similar, uncannily similar. Um, so, it's probably an advertising advertisement for a nightclub that everyone can look at as they're at the beach. Um, now, as we move through the trailer here, we get some lovely shots of some of the other hotels that are on the beach side. We've got this shot of the wetlands, which are probably where the a lot of the other wildlife is going to hang out, like you know the the birds and the alligators and all of that kind of stuff. So we think this is the like the Everglades area mm. of Florida, which is down very south towards the Florida Keys. It's clearly a bit more swampy looking. Um, we expect lots of different, you know, fauna, vegetation, and animal life in this area. There might be something more to say about this as we talk about the game's social media function and the, your ability to take photos and to do various things. We think this area could be more significant then. But, you know, at minimum, wow, you know, doesn't the, the, the life and the, the vegetation look fantastic? Yeah, like what I would say is if you took out the boat here, this could be a Red Dead 2 screenshot. Like think of those kind of environments that you get in Red Dead when you're in sort of the swampland areas and there's alligators roaming around. It's that kind of thing. And I think visually, obviously, this is even more of a step up than that. But this is the kind of environment that you'd be hanging around in. Another shot here of like uh, the wetlands or the National Park area. So much wildlife going on in here. <laughs> like there are flamingos. There's another alligator there there's a duck uh multiple types of birds and actually in the background right central to this shot there's actually another alligator that you can just see creeping into the water so hopefully these areas are going to be rich full of wildlife and as i think about it now and back to red dead is there a hunting element to this game where you go out and you can uh catch some wildlife yeah, I think it, it could be hunting. It could be almost like bird spotting, like searching out rare fauna or and or animals. I think, you know, photography and will play a big part of it or capturing things for your social media feeds. It could be something related to that. But I would be amazed were you not to revisit this for a reason. Next up, we're back at the beach. Uh, this, I think, is the same beach as we saw earlier. So this is Vice Beach again. Um, really nice touch on the sun lounges there it's called soul sisters and you can see like vice beach written on the side of it so we definitely know that's where we are uh, soul sisters is a good uh take on what someone would call those kind of things there are so many different clothing options on display here it's almost unreal like the amount of options that i assume you are going to be able to pick from when you're playing the game is incredible my favorite bit of this shot is the two people in the middle running. Uh, you can see the guy, if we go back and forwards on this quite slowly, you guy actually checks his watch or his Fitbit uh, device to see like how he's doing and how the run's going. And they have a lovely tiny dog. Yeah, that's, that's a really lovely touch. It's the diversity of NPCs. The diver you know, these aren't just gene you know, this is the opposite of the generic NPC meme. This is very diverse characters, amazing diversity of outfits, of body types, of colors. Uh, it, it's really rich and diverse in a way that it has never been before. When you pause as well, there's Easter eggs within that scene. You've noticed the dog. You might also notice the guy on the far right leaning down with a picture. What's he doing there? That's something deeply not appropriate, I would suggest. Well, I thought that originally, but I actually think it's okay. Because when you're playing it, like she's like twerking for him. So it actually, I think he's maybe doing it again because phones are going to tie into this so much. It's for some kind of social media platform. Oh, for, sorry, for sure. I mean, like, but he, he is <laughs> photographer. <laughs> it's with a permission. Yes. But he, he is taking a picture of her behind, it does appear. So that's just a really interesting detail. Something else someone noticed was that potentially characters are wearing sunscreen, mm. which is, is sort of hilarious. Now, later on in the trailer, you see an old sort of shriveled looking man who looks like he's been burnt by the sun. Now, that might be something else, but wouldn't it be amazing if the in the same way Red Dead let you grow real time facial hair? 
if you could actually be affected by being out in the sun. Yeah, there's actually um, a lady here on the left who's like, what almost looks like she's in like the classic T pose, uh, but she's not. She's just holding her arms out to get sprayed by the guy who's there, who's yeah. like going up and down with sunscreen. sunscreen. Um, there's bottles of sunscreen next to the people lying down on the right hand side, like just discarded on the beach. There's also a can of like uh, E. Cola, which is a returning brand from GTA. There's headphones on the beach. There's just like so many little details you can see here um, that we can't go into all of it. Top right, you can see a sea sparrow. Uh, that's the helicopter that can land on water, assuming yeah. they're back for the game. There's jet skis, there's rubber rings, loads going on. Like we could probably spend 20 minutes just talking about this one shot, but we not going to do that. No. We will come back to it at some point. Nice boat scene here. Uh, interesting to note who these guys are. Like, we don't know, but they must be somebody significant, I think, to get their own shot in the trailer. Uh, there's a few more of these type of shots later that are unnamed characters uh, that we're probably going to end up seeing more of once the game releases. It does have the feeling of something in a mission with three boats side by side, whether they're pursuing or fleeing from a situation. Just speculation, we don't know, but... And then moving through the trailer a bit further, we get another glimpse of Lucia and probably Jason. You can just about see his face as the camera moves through this scene. Um, so this is them having a good time. Also get uh, signs to Kelly County and VCI Airport, which is the new name for Vice City. I'm assuming it's international. Yeah, Vice City International, which used to be Escobar Airport in Vice City, so we're assuming it's been renamed. Other signs on the right there go to Stockyard and Downtown, and you can see that the car in front of Lucia here, there's a guy actually hanging out of the car window, again, filming her on his phone. Um, so I think, you know, as we'll get into in a bit, the presence of everyone being on their phone all the time and social media in this game feels like it's going to be really significant. Yeah, well, well, when we see the specific images, we'll get into it, but that in itself will be interesting if you can actively lean out of your car and film things that are going on around you. They're almost like It's almost like pointing a gun, but it's your phone. Mm. That would be an interesting mechanic if that's available to the player and this isn't just a cutscene. But uh, also it shows that... What it does show is Lucia clearly isn't afraid to take risks is quite a gregarious character you know she's clearly in this scene loving life like here for a good time yeah let's yeah, yeah. see how that works out <laughs> and just before we move on that building obviously looks quite iconic because it's got a big hole in it that is in real life uh, the marquee condos which are in miami you can look at pictures of it has a big hole in it uh, so that places this uh within our mapping project at some stage will be able to hopefully show you whereabouts this is in relation to everything else. Another really different scene here, lots of low riders going to some kind of what I assume is probably like a car meet. Um, loads of stuff, very different visually. Like this one's really bright uh, and really interesting scene, but there's not much to look at. You can like just see a lot of bikes and new cars and things, but plenty to get into at another time it just all cements the vibe like we talked about of it being very reminiscent of the fast and the furious universe this idea of custom rides pimping what you've got it seems really clear that you'll be able to create incredible unique bespoke vehicles uh, there's lots of hints throughout throughout the world now we're into a nightclub or less a nightclub more of probably a, a strip club um, you can see the sign here which i think is interesting make it rain Mondays. Now, if I was being putting my speculation hat on, I would love to be able to say that this is a hint towards GTA 5 having an ever-present calendar, if not monthly, maybe days of the week. And wouldn't it be lovely if you could go to these specific places on what your in-game phone or calendar would say was a Monday and different things would happen at different days of the week? The answer to that is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. And I, I also laugh because I wonder if it's always like, like GTA Fridays. It's always, it's always Fridays in GTA, you know, in GTA, uh, what do you call it? Uh, GTA Fridays. 
not GTA Fridays, T- TFI Fridays, what's TGI? it called? TGI? TGI Fridays, <laughs> whatever, it's been a long night. <laughs> yes, um, I just think that would be like a really cool thing and it would make the city feel really alive if only certain things happened on certain days and you were suddenly notified about, hey, it's Monday night, are you going to the club because this is happening? That would be really cool. I got the sense from this trailer that Rockstar almost want you to feel like overwhelmed with choice and options and that, you know, the world is like that at the moment. There's so much going on and everyone's like, oh, I didn't get to go to that thing. I got a bit of FOMO. All these people are posting about it and I missed out on that one specific event. Now, I'm not saying, although it'd be lovely that in the world of GTA 6, there are going to be one time only events, but it could be a thing that, oh, I've missed it, and now I have to wait another seven days for it to happen again. That would be a really nice way to make you feel like you have to do things at a certain time. Yeah, and we've long talked about, even going back to GTA V, we talked about the idea of like a persistent world where, for example, you would see buildings constructed in real time, and wouldn't it be amazing if that was some element? But I think maybe a lighter touch way to do it is what you've just said, where there are recurring events, so you don't miss them forever, but... You can't just nip in and do it at literally any time. I think that would make it more of an occasion. What I'd also say is, if anyone was in any fear about GTA 6, you know, hashtag going woke, it certainly isn't going PC (laughs) because it is not shying away from nudity and hedonism. So anyone worried that, you know, GTA is sort of losing its bite or adult edge, don't worry. There is one other thing in this scene that I wanted to point out, uh, which is a really tiny little detail, but this guy you can see on the left-hand side who's got a T-shirt on, which looks like it says Dolls of Destruction, uh, which I'm assuming is probably going to be an in-game band or something like that. But if you really look into it, you can see that below that are what appears to be tour dates or locations, and they read as Liberty City, Los Santos, and maybe like Las Venturas or San Fernando, something like that. Like, it's a nice, it might just be an Easter egg, but it's Mm. definitely a reference to other cities in the GTA universe. GTA World confirmed. I mean, (laughs) let's see, but I agree. At minimum, an Easter egg, fantastic Easter egg. Let, you know, could it mean more? Hmm, Let's see, let's see. Two guys here saying hello to each other. Again, not sure who these people are, but to give them their own moment in the trailer, to me, feels like they're going to be significant characters at some point. These feel beyond NPCs. I think the the close-up and the focus and there's clearly a relationship between them. These feel like key characters, or you know, at least key side characters within the world and the mission. Beyond that, it's just utter speculation. But And then we get maybe one of the most spectacular shots of the trailer if i mean they're all great but this one like it's nighttime it just looks amazing again so many details to pick out in here that could spend ages on it uh, but i think just visually like i mean even the draw distance here is amazing mm. yeah i mean it's i mean again i won't wax lyrical it's just to say visually this is utterly spectacular and you know, the lighting system is like nothing we've ever seen in a gta game so just drink it in. This is all about vibes. And then once you get to the street level, there's even more stuff going on. So a couple of things to point out here. Um, you can see a returning car, the Cheetah. Uh, there's again, next to that car, someone on their phone again, filming a load of stuff. Um, one of the cool bits is the guy who's sitting on the pavement, who I assume might be homeless or is at least doing things for money, has a, what originally I was going to say was a chameleon, but I think it's actually an iguana on his shoulder, and it's real. It's a real animal. Uh, He's just brought that out with him to say, you know, like when people would normally sit there with a dog, nope, he's up to the game, brought an iguana with him. Uh, So that's a, a really cool little visual touch there. The one other thing in this scene is that you can see at the background that with the pink signs... That looks like it says the Ocean View Hotel in pink neon, Ooh. which would be the Tommy Vercetti hotel room from Vice City. Yeah, that was your original safe house in Vice City. That would be a lovely nod. I would only, ex- I mean, I would only expect it to be some nods to the original Vice City, and it might just be touches like that in terms of locations. 
if you want to go full fan dream, you know, are there links to actual characters? And it's been a, a number of years, if, assuming we're present day versus the 1980s, almost 40 years have passed. So there are characters within that world who could have had children. But to speculate beyond that is, you know, I'd just be going to some crazy places, so I won't. But I would not expect in this it, episode. Well, I would no, not in this episode. But I would expect there to be some exploration of characters, lineages, or you know, whether it's sons or daughters of certain people we've seen before. But let's wait and see. And then we've moved into a nightclub. Whether it's the, one of the nightclubs on that same street or it's somewhere else in the world, we're not sure yet. Uh, this looks like something from. GTA Online or like one of the other nightclub scenes, the person on the decks feels like it's a a real person, like based on somebody. Uh, though it is speculation, and I'm leaning towards maybe agreeing with it that it could be Peggy Goo. Uh, if you look her up and put that photo side by side, she's like a Miami-based DJ uh, who's done some, you know, really breakout things you know the viral videos of her doing sets and stuff like that could it be her i mean definitely yes uh it, it could not be but it wouldn't surprise me if she was in the game and this is her doing one of her sets yeah i mean if not literally her which it very well could be you know inspired by a famous miami-based artist mm. I, I think those sort of link-ups we've seen them all the way through gto in line with real world musicians I would just expect that to carry through. Yeah, and I mean, I would love to tie this back to the theory of things do happen at a certain time and the what that could mean for this kind of thing. Like you go to, and maybe it's not an in-game calendar, but like a, you know, in real life calendar where they say, hey, if you went to a nightclub on November the 15th, there's going to be a DJ set from this person. You just go there in game and it happens very much like the way in you know Fortnite have yeah, their yeah. big events now. And it's like artists events. And this happens on this day for one night only. I can very much see Rockstar wanting to tap into that and getting people to play as much as possible for as long as possible and being and having things like that could be a really cool way to do it. 100% agree. We've talked on our two previous episodes about Rockstar's ambitions longer term might be to make GTA 6, you know, the, it's ultimately the platform for GTA Online and the next decade or more of GTA, which is basically will be online based. They are only going to look at what Fortnite is doing and say we want some of that. So I think this is a big nod in that direction, as might be the social media, as we'll get to very shortly. Just before we do that, we see a lovely shot of the ocean. Uh, and what feels like here is our first look at what could be stunt jumps. Uh, that bridge on the right hand side is not finished on either side. Uh, and I can very much imagine just taking a car up there and trying to land on the other side of the bridge. Um, another thing to point out in this is blimps are back. Uh, although that one in the middle of the shot here isn't actually flying, this is. Um, in real life, it's called Fat Albert, which is a blimp that is tethered to the ground. Uh, but another reference to a real life thing means we can accurately place this location as well once we get into that. Maybe you can help me, but there's what looks like a truck driving through the sea. So can you explain that one to me? <laughs> you mean you mean the, the, the boat with cargo containers on it? Is that a boat with cargo <laughs> containers? Yes. It's moving very slowly, but it, yeah, it's like a, it's not quite a massive shipping container ship, but it's a way of, I mean, it's got like three, a stack of three by three on it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's not a giant car driving through the sea. It's not a floating bus. I mean, that, that would be, as I say, it's been a long night, folks. Now, this scene is causing a lot of conversations online uh, about who this person is. There is a, 50 50 debate currently of whether or not it is lucia yeah i don't know definitively i think i would say no people were saying that lucia has uh, like moles on her arms or like slight marks and this character doesn't um, she has like a few like, i think this is the this is where it's becoming an issue is like you can see the one on her face like just below her right eye there yeah which she absolutely does have when she's in the prison scene at the beginning of this trailer. 
but she also has a lot more like tiny moles on her face. So whether this is a comment on everyone on social media what needing to look perfect all the time and feeling yeah, like they have yeah. to do loads of makeup and posing for photos and she has somehow become wrapped up in that world. I don't know. I'm still like 50-50 on whether whether it is her or not. Like there are similarities. It does. What but, it does say is that, you know, the, the hedonistic lifestyle is clearly a thread through Miami. This is exactly what you'd expect of a Miami situation. Uh, they're not shying away from, I guess, essentially nudity. Uh, this also looks a lot like a location you would buy in GTA Online. It's just got that classic, mm. you know, ultra expensive penthouse vibe. So, yeah, again, I think this is more about mood and, and setting out the scene. And as we move through the Vice trailer, we're into now uh, social media land. So these things come in uh, 916 format, which is the classic like TikTok uh Instagram format and also 16.9, which is classic YouTube things that people would post, you know, it's horizontal or vertical video, essentially. Um, but this one we get first is a horizontal one, which is this scene of, I think it is a reflection of when there was like all the Trump rallies on Miami Beach, like loads of people did this, like had big parties and flew American flags everywhere and that kind of thing. This feels like it could be that kind of thing that is going on here. Um, from the dad bod squad. Uh, so there you go. He's definitely rocking the dad bod, that's for sure. I, I think the thing to start thinking about is, you know, is this Instagram or TikTok or some kind of version in between? In terms of how we might interact with this, like, are these just almost like passive or is this like an interactive social media system in which case we can see straight away that potentially you've got the the ability to like name who you are dad bod squad or whatever follow is obvious you've got the ability to follow other people within the world then you've got heart which i assume is like and then what i assume again is like reply or do you think that's share look yeah it looks like a comment system i would have thought so you know those are potentially all things we can do now james had some interesting theories about the social media system i don't know whether you want to dive into that now or wait till we've seen a few more well we're sort of yeah we're in we're into uh, the social media section of the trailer so yeah i think everything you've said is right and i think i would hope that in the game these things you, you can follow these accounts and like how much that actually plays a part of the things that you're doing or the things that you can do that are away from the main missions we're not sure about and this is all speculation but wouldn't it be cool if this was a real social network inside and outside of the game so we know that rockstar have changed the social club slightly yeah. in preparation for the release of gta 6 wouldn't it be good if you could create an account on there that was also your account in the game and you could call it whatever you wanted and just go around filming little snippets taking pictures and getting followers in the game and outside of the game for the content that you are creating in the game. So you wouldn't do anything in real, you know, in the real world and be able to post that to the the network. But if you could, you know, if you wanted to become just the wildlife photography guy and your whole feed was just full of wildlife photography from GTA 6, you might even get those raccoons in there, Dan, for you. Um, wouldn't that be a cool way of, like, creating that kind of thing that when you do go onto those platforms in the game you just see things from accounts that you follow very much in the way that you know twitter tiktok and all of that you know this is trying to pastiche all of those things and i i do this is where i wonder if if that was the case like is everyone say you're playing as lucia in the single player game could it be that everyone who plays as lucia could create their own unique social media identity so your virtual character has a virtual identity themselves but they, they would be unique mm. so could it could it i mean I, i'm really speculating here but could it be that each single player person has it their own version of a digital avatar who's got a digital life much in the way that we're all pretend versions of ourselves online the same extends to within the game and then that would also create an interesting duality between the game asking you to do certain things to get on and complete the story and the things you should be doing 
versus the distraction and allure of just amass amassing followers and becoming famous. So you, you could theoretically, rather than do the next mission or whatever you've got to do, just potter around the Everglades doing photography mm. because you see your real objective as getting more followers or being really famous within the game. That would be you know, in itself entertaining, but also a bit of commentary on how utterly besieged we are in real life by the need to be validated and to be constantly broadcasting. Yeah, absolutely. Like the other flip side of that, you know, or 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 could this be a way of introducing you to side missions and random encounters? You know, could could it be go and find the guy who's dancing on the boat and, you know, take a picture of him and that's, you know, a, a five minute distraction from the main quest that you go and do those these kind of things or it gives you an alert and says, as we'll see later, hey, there's this night street race happening pop down there take a photo of the winner like that kind of thing it, it could all tie in really really well or not at all <laughs> yeah it's a really clever that's a clever idea i think the idea of you get presented with things that could be side missions or distractions you choose to follow them and maybe by following that's you actually adding that mission mm. which you don't realize is a mission to your map so it could be saying we've i've activated the dad bod squad <laughs> side quest yeah. for example we don't know any of this but i think that would be a really fun way to change the mechanics of the game and make it feel more immersive all right let's move on from uh, dad bods on to alligators uh, being in pause this is a real thing that happens in miami it happens quite a lot i think alligators just end up going into people's pools and someone has to come and pull them out and take them away uh, this is a new brand for gta uh, official poach uh, poach stands for, you can see in their tiny logo, protection of animals and controlled hunting. Uh, again, as we said at the very beginning of this video, is hunting going to play a part? Is it controlled hunting? Could you go and, like we were saying, if you followed the official poach account, does that mean it opens up hunting missions for you? Could you, on a bigger scale, like we talked about in yesterday's show, does this tie in to the acquisition of the role-playing servers. Could you become a member of the Protection of Animals for Controlled Hunting and just go around <laughs> pulling alligators out of pools for the whole game? I don't know. And I love the idea of controlled hunting. It suggests an entirely more interesting dynamic where if you're just going with your shotgun to shoot alligators, that's probably, apart from the civil unrest, would be fairly easy and, and silly. Mm. But if your challenge is there's an alligator on the loose and you need to somehow capture him legitimately with a net or whatever you would use, it becomes an entirely different channel, challenge because you can't just shoot your way out of it. Mm. I think that would make for something really interesting and fun and would speak to the, the scene we're about to see where the alligator is loose in, you know, in, in the convenience store. Yeah, just before that, we've got some dump truck action uh, going on here. That is something that it says on here. That is not me yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just, just saying that out loud. Um, this is from another, you know, have a vice day. Good name. Like if you were being tasked with coming up with your own name, that would be a really good one. Uh, but it's clearly already taken. Um, but another example of people doing things for social media and trying to create those viral clips constantly. As we see in the next scene with the what looks like a car meet, is it going to turn into a race around the city? Who knows, but this looks like a very well-organized event uh, that I think eventually you could turn up to. Yeah, and there's lots of, t we talked about the obvious Fast and the Furious uh, links. Lots of people have identified what they think are up to three rival gangs within the city, which could obviously be much more. That would be consistent with all the previous GC GTAs. You know, could it be rival groups meeting up at a car rally? Where does Lucia fit into all of this? Let's see. And here is the scene that you just talked about. The alligator enters the shop. A couple of things to note in this scene is the shop is called Go Postal, um, which is uh, an, uh, an obvious take on know posting things out but also yes going going postal, postal. yeah um, and there seems to be a, a lottery machine there on the left hand side which says uh, a new billionaire every uh, no millionaire it's an m isn't it yes a new millionaire every week 
could there be an in-game lottery system that you could play every week and eventually you might win some money? That would be fun. It would tie up with your dates idea. It would be a almost an incentive to come back into the game sporadically to see if you've, you know, you, you buy you buy your ticket, it takes your choice. Uh, something I wanted to quickly pick up on the previous uh, social media clip we saw was that looked like someone broadcasting live mm. and there were comments appearing in what looked like real time to that going live. So it seems like we've seen some social posts that look like things that have already happened, but some social posts, you know, could it be that your character has the ability to go live at any minute and like broadcast from their perspective during an event that needs some thought but it does feel like a distinction between things that have happened and things that are happening yeah and, and you tie that back to those one-time events could you go live when you're going to see the dj in the club and broadcast that to your followers you know if you can't get there i can watch yes my friend's feed of it yeah i'm doing the mind blown uh, <laughs> thing right now this is uh, the next image um, is a, a cop raid on what we assume is some criminals. Uh, the interesting thing here is on the left-hand side, it says, beware of the dog. That is definitely a picture of Chop from GTA V, like without question. It's a little bit blurry, but if you take the Chop artwork and you put it next to that, it's chop. Now, I'm not saying that it's is literally chop. literally chop. I'm not saying it's literally <laughs> chop. Uh, but what I am saying is maybe in this world, because we think it's in the same universe as GTA V, has, oh, and now, 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 okay, put your double tin foil hat on for this one, has Chop got his own TikTok slash social media account that he has become famous in the world of GTA, and now his picture is on things that say beware of the dog. I, I want to believe. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Uh, I know you're a big fan of dogs, so I want to believe. Let's see. But I do think, at minimum, again, a cute Easter egg nod and definitely the same breed and makes perfect sense. Where this scene becomes really interesting, obviously, is that it's body cam footage. Mm. It's first person footage. It's a different perspective from every perspective. As in, it looks like you're playing here in through the eyes of what we assume is the law, the you know the brackets good guys, which I think itself is a concept that will be quite relative in this game. Um, some people are speculating that you know, do you play as a policeman? Me, I was speculating that. Yeah, and we'll talk. <laughs> we'll definitely talk about that. And you know, do, do do you play as a policeman? Do do you have missions that are literally first person? Well, you know, you kind of did because GTA 5 let you pop into first person. So in itself, that's not a revelation. It's more that what if there are mission types that were like this? Some people were saying, oh, what if the Rampage missions were in first person? First person. First person. Uh, and let you, you know, do things that way. Uh, also, people are saying, does this scene contain the other lead character as we know it, Jason? Now, but I've seen it speculated both ways. But some people think, oh, look, it's Jason. He's one of the police. Someone else is saying, oh, is that Jason in the building they're breaking into? Um, with the absence of a 4K screenshot and lots of lightning, I'm a bit not sure where to lean with that. No, and I, I am leaning more towards that it's not him inside this apartment. It could be, you could, you know, and assuming that this is, you know, stuff that you can interact with in the game and as other people have said that these aren't all just you know tv shows that you can see in certain you know in your apartment or things that you can watch on the social network and you know there could be loads and loads of different tv shows and this is just you know the cop show that you watch in world but assuming that this is something that or a hint towards some kind of gameplay i would lean towards that I mean, like we talked about, that this, you are now playing as Jason, but in another guise. So the, the multiple, again, tin hat theory <laughs> could be that you play as three characters in GTA 6, but two of them are Jason. And one of them is, is his character when he is with Lucia and trying to infiltrate some kind of gang or whatever the story is. And the other one is his role as a cop. And... Wouldn't it be a nice change of perspective if all of the cop things were from this kind of first-person perspective? So you instantly know 
which kind of side that you're on. The When you're with Lucia, it's all third person. And if you go in to do police raids like this, could all be first person. What I would like even further about that, if these, if these sections, and if indeed they are sections, are played from the first person, Rockstar could obscure the fact that you're even playing as Jason because you would never see him. Mm. So you could you could suddenly cut to a section like this where you're suddenly, oh my god, I'm playing as a policeman. And hang on, isn't this isn't this a different perspective on a scene I've just played as the burglars or the baddies, whoever you want to describe it? But they wouldn't even have to necessarily out your character as Jason in the moment. It could be a big reveal for later on. There's so much, you know, within that that's open to speculation of course right what where i think now let's really pull the veil back what i do think one of the grandest thematics of gta 6 will be what is probably the single biggest issue in the world certainly in america it is apart from I suppose, inequality and all the other various things you talk about it's essentially about the utterly binary nature of politics, belief, and the culture war, and the the inability of people to relate to people from what they see as from the other side. This mm. feels like one of the biggest problems in the world. In America, it's at a level beyond you see anywhere else. Rockstar, I would be staggered were they not to want to make a commentary on the nature of people affiliating with groups and never looking outside their current worldview. There's multiple ways they could do that. So one would be, like we've talked about, to have two characters like Lucia and Jason, who we assume are on the same side, brackets, they might not be. And then to also have this other layer, whether it's through social media. So you've got the characters who may or may not be lying to each other, but are ultimately acting together. So they're approaching the shared problem from different perspectives and you might see it from those perspectives you will also have the distorting effect of the reporting so in the same way that social media in real life is a battleground of people representing the truth to suit their agendas could it be that social media is used in gta 6 to represent or misrepresent events that you've already played or are about to experience so the whole story is about you examining like the truth quote marks but from multiple perspectives you know quite literally whether it's first person through a different character's eyes from a different belief system at a different level of chronology that would feel like a really exciting way for gta to say something super super relevant yeah so much stuff to go into there uh, absolutely i mean i'm very much on board with that theory let's see if it plays out let's see if we can find out any more details uh, over the next few weeks and months. Now we move back to social media footage. Uh, we've got a few more things here um, that we can note that the gas station is called Arrow. We can see a, a rotund person running across the street. Mm. Uh, again, it's it's all trying to get that those viral clips. Um, the next one is a guy who's got out of his car because of traffic problems, they assume. Um, the cool detail here is he's actually like taped his car up with tape yeah, uh, because it's obviously falling apart and, and that's the way to fix things. Other signs in the background that we've seen before, Vice Beaches to the port of Vice City, to the Keys, to Vice City International Airport, would probably put this in and around the same area as the previous signs uh, because they're pointing to the same place, obviously. I'd also note that this character is clearly from a different tribe. You know, he's more like a sort of traditional, again, I'm grossly stereotyping, but more sort of a hillbilly rocker type. Looks more like a sort of MAGA guy. He's wearing the, the US uh, cap and hat. We're going to see the melting pot that is modern America. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is, let's be clear, Florida is, it's Trump country, quite literally, where he has, in real life, his Mar-a-Lago Mar uh, residency. Do we expect to see a former president's compound in in GTA 6? I would expect so. Yes. Uh, will that contain, uh, you know, files borrowed from his time in government? Let's wait and see. But that that just feels such an obvious thing for Rockstar to do. And, but it looks so good as well that they'd almost not... Of course you take it. A quick note on, on the next one. 
which is is the guy uh, driving his truck with his feet. Um, there are loads of things in the background of his truck here, like vinyl, uh, vinyl signs. There's a hashtag for, let me get this right, uh, Ride Out Customs. And what looks to be in the bottom left of that, like a some kind of social network symbol you know, in the classic sort of Instagram style thing. So again, very much social media focused. A lot of people were saying as well, it's it's interesting that he's named like Rudy R.I.P. Is that just a random piece of social media or is that a character who becomes interlinked with your universe? So I, you know, R.I.P. I assume he's died possibly while driving with his feet at full speed. But it feels significant that that character gets a bit more screen time. Now, I don't want to skip through this next scene, Dan, because I know you wanted to point it out. So here is your 20 seconds of, of the almost naked man doing some gardening. Yeah, I think the main thing of this scene is to go, isn't Florida weird, full of exotic characters, unusual people, cranks, God knows what. So this guy is clearly sunburned. His shoulders are bright red. That's an occupational hazard from walking around naked in a thong in an extremely hot place. This aligns with what we saw people putting suntan cream on in the earlier scene. So, again, it would be really cool if your character could get burnt and you had to consider the weather. OK, we're getting towards the end of the trailer now. There's a couple of things I wanted to point out in this scene. This is obviously the Thrill Billy Mud Club, which feels like it's definitely outside of the city somewhere. Uh, can't quite put a location on this, but there's monster trucks. It's really dirty. This is clearly some kind of festival that is happening. The people in the background who look tiny, I have seen people saying, oh, look, there's, you know, kids confirmed. But if you actually freeze frame and, and scan through this, they're just adults on their knees. Yeah, these aren't children. That would open up an incredible moral quandary uh, and be absolutely barbaric. So these are just people who've got their knees invisible because they're in the mud. Again, this is this is like MAGA America, I guess. Clearly, you're going to be able to ride dirt bikes around this sort of terrain. It's going to be super fun. There's probably official mini games around it. Something to note is how incredibly photorealistic this scene is. Mm. Uh, it's a leap above the stuff that looks more purely in game. A quick reference uh, to this hammer lady. Now, uh, she also is, I think, uh, is basically a pastiche on what really happened. Like there is a viral clip of a woman who is holding two hammers who goes around <laughs> smashing stuff. Um, we can probably find you that clip and, and show you it, but it's, it's obviously a reference. This is going to happen a lot in GTA 6. References to like viral moments and things that have happened over the last five to ten years you're going to see a lot of this kind of thing popping up. Yeah, and a note again to how incredibly photorealistic this looks. Jumping forward a couple of scenes here, and we get a look at, once the camera pulls to the left, Jason driving away from somewhere. Uh, it's interesting that there is this sign here um, for angsty pan. Uh, it cures emotions. Like a classic rock star take on... Uh, some kind of uh, medical thing. The symbol in the bottom right also looks a lot like the Pfizer symbol, but it's obviously just the yeah. in-world take I mean, on that. And anyone who's lived in America will know that this is a culture where taking tablets to cure your problems is heavily promoted, so don't feel anything, just vibe your way through the day. And then we get a good close-up shot of Jason. I would say in this shot, like, trying to tie all our theories together, he looks worried and concerned but i wouldn't say he looks worried about the police that have just driven past him it's more maybe thinking about what he's just done like has he not been that trustworthy and and done something or is he thinking about other things he does have the same bandana on here as he does in some of the later shots where we see them robbing like a convenience store um i think it's uh could be the same car, could be a different car, but incredible detail nonetheless. That, that's an interesting observation that maybe this is less in worrying about escaping than accepting the enormity of what he's just done and the, maybe the fact there's no going back from, you know, for example, robbing a store or committing a crime like he's set off down a certain path. There is one thing to note here that we haven't picked up on previously is that these side mirrors on the cars do seem to be working side mirrors, so you can see... Uh, the police drive past in the wing mirrors, uh, which is a nice touch. And I know something that people wanted in GTA 5 that didn't happen. So it looks like might be in 6. 
Right, a few more scenes to go. This one is important because not only do we get to see Lucia again wearing a red bandana and a black top, which is the same as the scene that we're about to see them in. So is this all from the same sequence? I'm going to say yes, because I don't expect that they're wearing the same outfits for every robbery that they're doing. That would be pretty stupid and you'd yeah, be able to yeah. identify all the things that they had done it looks like we're seeing the conclusion to the getaway before we see the the crime which comes on later on yeah now uh, the attention deal here is incredible to the point that the money here you can actually see uh, the serial numbers on it and again shout out to um the team on the gta forums who have said that the money is so detailed here that it starts, the serial number starts with an S on the $20 bill, which places it in 2023 because they didn't start using S's on serial numbers on $20 bills until that. At the very least, it's 2020 plus. Uh, so that puts us in pretty much where we thought we were going to be anyway. It's modern day Miami. Amazing detail. We'll skip through a couple of news broadcasts here. This one's from Weasel News, a returning brand that we've had in GTA before. Interesting that the thing that they are reporting on here is a crash, uh, but it is after uh, someone has done a dine and dash from Pee Wee's, uh, which is obviously a, a restaurant in the game, um, but tried to get away without paying, smash their car up. Equally, another what could be news report here of this guy who's got covered in tattoos. Now, if you translate that text, it actually looks like he's dropped himself in it here, right, Dan? Yeah, they, basically he's written his crime on his tattoos and got caught through it, so more fool you. Uh, some people are saying, because of the way this character looks, could it be a hint to how you can customise yourself in GTA Online? Maybe, maybe not, but it, again, it's just showing incredible depth of the character models and I guess the multiple perspectives from which stories will be told. Yeah, and this sheriff's office that he is in is the Vice Dale County. You can see it just before that lower third pops up there. The imagery there is is quite significant in that it's a, an alligator huh. grabbing what looks like a child uh, and a snake coming down from the tree, which is very much uh, like the reference in uh, the Bible in Genesis of, you know, the snake coming down and doing all yes, that stuff. Yes, and we are talking about people being deep in God's country, the Bible Belt, so this all makes complete sense. And you know, GTA games are the home of vice, quite literally. Loads of ATVs and motorbikes uh, to talk about here later. Then some more weasel news of that same dirt bike crew, we would assume. Now, there's a couple of things on below this that are interesting, which obviously you're meant to look at the stuff that's going on on the screen. Um, but it looks like one of the news reports suggests that a mental patient has won the Vice City Marathon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which... If you read into that further, does that mean that there is some kind of asylum in the game that you can visit that patients are at that may or may not play into the story? Possibly. Is they is there going to be a Vice City Marathon that takes place, hey, if we're going on the date theory, once a month and you can go and take part of it if you want and it's you know it's just a stamina game where you yeah. tap X and you try and run around the city? Possibly. We don't know. Um, and then I think the last bit of this is Vice City Girls officially the, I'm going to say it's going to say prettiest, but you don't, you don't quite get to the end of the ticker. Uh, so it's, they're officially something. We're just not sure what they are yet. We go through one more social media post before we get to the last few scenes of the trailer. This is Jason and Lucia who are robbing a corner shop or convenience store jason's got a wad full of cash in his hand which is what we see lucia with in that previous shot when they're counting the money they are wearing the same bandanas red bandana for lucia black one for jason the same tops uh, so i think that this is them doing one of the small scale robberies probably something that you would start off with the scenery here is incredible like all the bottles are 3d model they've all yeah. got brands like it's it's amazing what I think is interesting, though, is when we get to the final shot of the trailer in a minute, it's what I'm assuming is the same store, but they are coming in the front door, whereas here it looks like maybe they've come in the back. Does that play into the fact that there are going to be, like there were in GTA 5, 
two approaches or multiple approaches to doing different missions. And depending on who you're doing that with, you either go in loud or you go in a little bit more subtly. Like that seems to be something that I think could be very plausible. It's also worth noting they let you see the CCTV camera in frame, which um, going back to some of the stuff that leaked, it seemed to be that there was like footage from other angles and this is going to be part of it it's going to be seeing the same event from multiple perspectives yeah and just on a branding thing we've got e cola here we've got uh pisswasser pisswasser 9 which i'm going to assume is the alcohol free version of pisswasser so they've updated it to obviously fall in line with all of the new brands doing alcohol free versions of everything obviously pisswasser doesn't want to get left behind so they've done pisswasser zero great stuff so, yeah, they leave the shop here. This is them driving away from the shop. You can see uh, as the frame goes forward that Lucia is wearing the same red bandana that she was in the shop that we just saw. Uh, they've got a red getaway car here. Is this the same one as the one that Jason looked worried in earlier? Yeah, a bit of steering Probably. wheel analysis might corroborate that. We'll, yeah. we'll do that later on. Um, and the shop, I don't think this is the shop that they're driving away from. I think there is, you can see in a background, a more convenience store looking type establishment, but they do drive past a porn and gun shop. Now, is this a replacement for ammunition? Maybe. Could there be multiple gun brands in Vice City? Oh, certainly, but it looks like now there could be porn and gun could be the new ammunition, but we will find out in due course. So they drive away here. We get the scene of them both saying trust to each other, which, as we mentioned at the top, we think is going to qu play quite a significant role in the entire storyline of, of GTA 6. Who's trusting who? Is anyone going behind people's backs? That kind of thing. But, it, it, I mean, it, it definitely implies here that they are in a relationship, whether it's a relationship that they both know exactly what's going on in. Who knows? Yeah, it's a question of what are they hiding from each other, if at all. We talked about Lucia meaning light. It also means someone who's lucky in love. Is she the good person in the relationship? Is he the bad person? Is it not a case of good or bad, but just different perspectives? This seems to be the central tenet of the game, the idea of, of trust. And it almost can, you know, can love overcome trust, perspective issues. I, I just think that's what this game is going to be all about is is understanding of each other's scenario. And if Rockstar were able to get that message across to the world in their mass market game, sensational. And then we get to the final shot of the trailer with them kicking the front door. And you can see the same red car that just drove away in the previous screenshot outside, ready for them to make their getaway. Same bandanas again, clearly about to rob this place. Uh, but this time coming in the front door. Maybe it's it's all connected and they come in the front door, they run into the back, they grab the money, they leave. Like It could just be one yeah. sequence. Um, we're just speculating that could, there could be two approaches here. A couple of nice signs on the doors. Uh, you can see that it says, we no longer accept cash stored in underwear. This is a very <laughs> real sign that is that people have seen in Miami uh, that I'm sure we can put a comparison up of. Um, and there's another thing here to note that iFruit, which is the in-game equivalent of iPhone, yep. looks like it's still present and they have a what looks like a fruit pay symbol instead of, you know, Apple Pay. Yeah. Makes perfect meaning sense. Meaning that everyone, you know, takes card transactions. Now, just before we leave you, one final tin hat idea is what if in the increasingly digital world uh, and that criminals need to have a lot of cash with them and need to offload that somewhere we know there's been rumors of like money laundering missions that may be coming to the game could it be necessary for people like lucia to transfer that physical cash into digital currency via something like money laundering and could the city of vice city be less accepting of actual cash, meaning you have to have some kind of thing in the game where you have to trans, you know, transfer the the money that you've got as actual banknotes into a digital currency in order to get rid of it. Maybe, and I think that would be a cool way 
and an interesting dynamic to say, you know, the things outside the city do, do still still take cash and you'll get away with spending that in these kind of, you know, more rural areas. But once you go into Vice City, you're going to need that, you know, iFruit pay type transaction to get all of the high end luxury things. Or you can just pay in cash. Yeah. Like, how do you launder money? I'm not a criminal, so obviously I don't know. <laughs> but we've all watched TV. Uh, you can own businesses. You can potentially invest in crypto, which doesn't. It's an agnostic currency and can come from anywhere. There's all sorts of ways this could play out through game mechanics. So I think that's done the right way. A potentially really interesting subplot. And there we are, the lovely GTA 6 logo, which wraps up this trailer analysis. I'm sure it's going to be a very short episode, um, but thanks for sticking with us. If you have made it all the way to the end, uh, we really appreciate it. Hopefully there's some things there that have given you a bit of an insight that you haven't seen elsewhere. As we said at the beginning, please comment below on things that we might have misinterpreted or things that you have discovered or want to know more about. We have plenty more episodes before we get any more GTA 6 information, we think. So there's lots and lots of things to discuss. Yeah, we're, to add, we're super tired. We saw the trailer, you know, 12 hours ago. We're recording in a room that weirdly is freezing. So we're shivering our way through the episode. So please go gentle on us if we've missed some details. All this stuff we'll be breaking as we go. Follow us on uh, Twitter, which is still at GTA 5 o'clock to get all of the latest info as it breaks and we'll share stuff from all different types of sources. Do let us know in the comments your theories. Help us solve some of these details. Help us map out the episodes we're going to do for the weeks, months and years ahead. We've had some brilliant responses already from people answering the last episode, people from the 5N community who've come forward and some also other potentially really exciting guests. Stay in touch. It means so much to us to be part of this community. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. This has been a really exciting episode. I've really enjoyed doing that. I am super hyped for GTA 6 now, more than I was uh, this morning. So thanks for being with us. Thanks for listening. This has been a special edition, so there will not be a regular show this week on Wednesday, but we will be back next week for another episode. So please join us then for more GTA 6 o'clock. <laughs>